so we showed you some clearing tests for SIJ hip, uh, knee, and ankle. Now, there is clearing tests for the lumbar spine where, you know, somebody comes in, let's say, with buttock pain, and you think their history sounds like their hip. Uh, they turn their hip, move their hip. That's when they get their pain. So you're thinking, okay, I want to do a hip exam, but I want to make sure it's not lumbar spine. This is what you do for the lumbar spine. So rather than go through the whole, every single plane of movement, what you're going to do, let me just uh, have you come forward, Joseph. So just real quick is you have them flex, flexion. Any symptoms with that? No. Nope. Nope. And then you have them do neck flexion, neck to chest. Any change in symptoms with that? It's uncomfortable. It's uncom Where is it uncomfortable? Oh, never mind the reason I had it went away. <laughs> So what, what are we doing? What, what's happening? So when Joseph bends forward, no symptoms. Good. Chin to chest, Joseph. What happens? Uh, there's pain in the middle of my back until I raise my shoulder blade. Until he raises his shoulder blade. So what, what, is, what, what structure am I influencing when I'm doing neck flexion? Chin Yeah. Kind of the dura, kind of the spinal cord. So if that, let's say this causes him pain in his back, and then he bends his chin, and it makes it worse, then you may be suspecting something going on, a tension. We'll talk about neural tension within the nervous system. That's another lecture, okay? So that's reflection. Then you just have him do extension, no overpressure. Any symptoms with that? Mm -hmm. No? Okay. Now quadrant. So quadrant, um, go, ahead and, go ahead and take your shirt off, Jason. Um, does everyone have the Maitland book by any chance? <laughs> With us? No, just do you have it? Yeah. yeah. You bought it? Yes. yes. Okay, good. <laughs> You'll be surprised. <laughs> have you turn, uh, turn face that way. Thanks, Jason. Um, so Maitland talks about different quadrants that you can put the spine in. I kind of touched, this, uh, uh, touched upon this in lecture where sometimes through just one plane movements, flexion, side bending, rotation, you don't get any symptoms. You go through this full overpress, nothing. So now you're saying, okay, I really got to find out where this pain is because I really think it is the lumbar spine. Now you need to do combined movements. So there are, if you look at Maitland's textbook, he talks about a lots of different quadrant positions in flexion and you're combining side bending and rotation. We're just going to have you stress one area, because when, when Maitland, when we usually talk about lumbar quadrants, we're kind of talking about this specific position, where you're having the patient going into extension, side bending, right side bending, and right rotation. So that really compressing on the right side. So that's a right lumbar quadrant. And then you take to take them into overpressure, kind of stabilize the sacrum a little bit, and then taking kind of combining that move. You okay? Yep. So be careful with some of the people like Jessica. She won't like this one. <laughs> All right. And so to go to the left, you have them go into extension, side bend left, rotate left, and then overpress. And that's a left lumbar quadrant. So it's a combined movement. I'm doing multi-plane movements. Now just know there are, you know, you could go, not to make it more complicated, like extension, side bending left, and then rotation right. So that's a different quadrant position. But we, we don't want to confuse you there, okay? So we're going to try to keep it simple. So when we're talking about lumbar quadrants in general, we're going to talk about extension, side bending, and rotation. So a right lumbar quadrant left lumbar quadrant, okay? And just know that you can do quadrants in flexion too. That's... All right, so that's part of the lumbar clearing, okay? Now in your active movements with the lumbar spine, I didn't show you the, the quadrant position, because usually you will typically provoke someone's symptoms. If they have back pain, you will typically provoke their symptoms with these single plane movements. 
But in, in the off chance that you don't, you get that one patient, you can't provoke it, then you go into quadrant. But if you've already provoked their symptoms, you don't have to go into quadrant. If I already provoked their symptoms with my clearing exam, with flexion, I don't have to go into the other positions. Okay? If I haven't provoked, let's say, the buttock pain, I'm trying to clear the spine, the last thing you have to do is palpate. That's where you get them prone and we do the centrals, unilaterals.